This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome to Farm Factor. Up first, Kyle Bauer and Brian Klippenstein with Protect the Harvest. Talk about why the organization was developed and how it defends against the activist groups when it comes to food security. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer visiting with Brian Klippenstein. He's with Protect the Harvest. Brian, let's start with who is or what is Protect the Harvest? Protect the Harvest is a nonprofit that was stood up by uh, Forrest Lucas, uh, founder of Lucas Oil. Uh, to fight for food security issues and to take on in the political cre uh, arena uh, those we uh, refer to these days as the uh, food police. And so when you're talking the political arena, would that involve legislation or would that involve uh, initiatives in states? Uh, largely initiatives, but we've been to, in federal court. Uh, uh, we've been in, in uh, uh, before state government, federal government, uh, and just before the public at large. Uh, you know, the you increasingly have uh, uh, groups that are well-funded. There is a lot of money these days and more to come in food politics. It used to be limited to trying to dictate uh, how farmers farm. Increasingly, what they're trying to do is control diets, control refrigerators, control what people eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's a, a, an emerging threat. And certainly, um, a lot of that is disguised uh, as animal rights issues or environmental issues when it's really about an agenda that's hidden? Uh, that's right. I, look, the, the, uh, when I have had discussions with this with uh, East Coast media recently, for example, uh, you know, what's the end game here? What, what's, what's behind? And I'll say, well, look, they are, what they're promoting is a vegan diet. Oh, well, that's silly. Well, it's not silly. You go to their website and that's what they're for. I mean, we have Meatless Monday, right? We have six days to go. And anyone who wants to embrace any diet that they prefer, we don't object to. But when they try to impose it upon others, particularly using false pretenses, uh, we're going to go give them a fight. And, and I can see where you fill a gap in that when there's an initiative, let's say I'll, I'll pick on Missouri, um, and that might be difficult for people fighting that initiative in Missouri because they've never done it before, but you may have already fought that battle in three other states. Right, yeah, and, it, and it's, look, the, it's the, the people in agriculture are good at producing. They've, they're good-natured people. Uh, they're uh, cooperative in nature. They're great at taking care of land and the animals. Uh, but you know, uh, rough and tumble, bare knuckles politics uh, uh, it, it is not what they're great at. And well, and it takes a lot of money. Well, and that's where we're still short. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, to the point where you know. Agriculture, particularly big agriculture, is going to have to come to grips with this because winning these things is a choice. It takes an investment. Uh, and I'm among those who think that if they care about their own business, they care about their, their uh, suppliers, they care about their customers, they care about sound, sound science, they are going to invest. And so far, they've decided not to. We're visiting with Brian Klippenstein. He's with Protect the Harvest. This is Kyle Bauer reporting. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Kyle. Folks, come back after these messages for this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. 